Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to speak a bit about the conservation of energy. Now, what this means in real terms is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. There we go. So energy cannot be created or destroyed. And what this means in real terms is that we cannot just, you know, snap our fingers and just produce energy out of nothing. I touched on this in the last video, but basically energy, there is a finite amount of energy in the universe. And all we can do is convert energy from one form to another. Or all energy can do is be converted from one form to another. For example, chemical energy. Let's say, for example, you had a certain amount of chemical energy. That can be turned into a certain amount of kinetic energy or electrical energy or whatever. But if you had five joules of energy, you can't turn that into ten joules of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be converted. So it can only be converted. And of course, if you don't remember what the different types of energy are, then have a look at the previous video on the different types and forms of energy. Now let's take a look at a common example which shows uh, energy being transferred from one form to another. Now this here is known as a pendulum pendulum exactly the same as the band um, now a pendulum is basically one of these balls or whatever it's going to be on a string or on a piece of metal or whatever and it's allowed to swing back and forward probably do that in a different color there we go it's allowed to swing back and forward so its movement is going to be backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and what we can do is we can examine what is going on um, in terms of energy transfer at each stage. So let's first have a look here. Here the pendulum has stopped its kinetic energy. Remember kinetic energy is movement. Well there's pretty much no kinetic energy at the instant it's here. Because it's stopped moving completely and then it's going to fall back down. What has happened though is its gravitational potential energy... So GPE, remember that is an object, its position, so how high it is, is at its maximum at that point because here it would be above what it would be down here, for example. So gravitational potential energy is high and kinetic energy is down the bottom. It's not very high at all. It's probably zero at this instant. Okay, and then what about when the ball reaches here and here? So these two, you're looking at the pendulum is actually going as fast as it can go. That's because it accelerates as it moves down, accelerates, accelerates. The only time it will decelerate is when it has to go up again. It's like if you tried rolling a tennis ball down a hill, it's going to go faster and faster and faster. If it then tries to go back up a hill, it's going to slow down and slow down and slow down. That's exactly what's happening here. And that means that at this instant, we've accelerated all the way to our maximum speed which means our maximum kinetic energy is present. We've got the most kinetic energy because we're going the fastest. But at this point, we also have the least gravitational potential energy. That's because here, the pendulum is at its lowest. Here it's really high, and here it's at its lowest. And so that means that the gravitational potential energy here has been converted into kinetic energy here. Now, as it continues its movement, it's going to decelerate, get slower and slower and slower. And that means the kinetic energy is then going to go back down. And surprise, surprise, the gravitational potential energy has gone back up again because it's got higher and higher and higher again. Now, if we have a perfect pendulum where we have no other uh, energy transfer at all, this happens on and on and on and on. And it doesn't really and it doesn't stop. That's because it's showing energy being transferred from one form to another. If, for example, the air was slowing it down, then we would get some friction in the air and we'd get heat given off, we could get sound given off, then this will eventually probably stop. However, if this was perfect and we were just transferring kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, energy can't cre be created or destroyed, and so this would go on forever. Now, it's important that that perfect situation will almost never happen because there'll always be some sort of energy being wasted and given off somewhere else. So this will potentially, sorry, not potentially, this will always stop. 
Okay, so now pause the video and try and work out what's going to happen uh, in terms of energy transfer when a bungee jumper jumps off the crane or the cliff or whatever. So bungee jump. Okay, I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, so I hope you had a go. Here I've obviously got a simple diagram of a bloke jumping off a bridge on a bungee. Now, what's going to happen in terms of energy transfer? Well, when he's at the top, when he's standing here on the cliff, he's going to have maximum, so maximum gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy is going to be almost nothing, so pretty much nothing. He'll probably be moving around slightly, but we'll just say he's got no kinetic energy at the moment. Now, as soon as he jumps off, what's going to happen is his gravitational potential energy is going to decrease, and as he accelerates, his kinetic energy is going to increase because he's getting faster and faster and faster. Now, eventually what's going to happen is this. You now see that the bungee has straightened out. And we know that the bungee is going to stretch because that's what bungees do. If they didn't stretch, then a bungee jump would be a very painful experience. So the bungee is going to stretch, and that means that the elastic potential energy is going to increase. Elastic potential energy is going to go up, and that's because it's being stretched. Now what's important here though is that when a bungee or an elastic band or whatever is stretched, it heats up. So it also heats up. You've probably felt this, if you've stretched an elastic band quite far and then you've felt the elastic itself, it's probably really hot. And that's because this heat energy is produced. That heat energy is known as thermal energy. I didn't include that in the last um, video, but thermal energy is heat energy. Okay, so you'll get some thermal energy produced as well. Now what's going to happen is his kinetic energy is going to go down because the elastic is stretching as much as it can and eventually he stops right at the bottom. So kinetic energy, well, not up, is going to go down. Okay. Then next phase, what's going to happen after that? So let's delete this text here. After that... Well, the elastic is going to ping back up and the guy is going to shoot back up and we'll get a bungee which is wavy again because he shot back up. But he won't go back up as high as the bridge and that's really important. That's because some of the energy has been lost in other places. So let's do it in green again, be consistent. His kinetic energy is going to slightly go up because he's moving again. His gravitational potential energy is also going to go up because he's going higher up again. Elastic potential energy is going to go down because that energy is being released. And when I say released, it's being converted into these types. So these types of energy have come from elastic potential. Sorry, that means elastic potential has gone down. However, some of the energy has not been destroyed and it's not just been deleted, but it was lost as heat. So the heat has meant that the total energy in terms of kinetic, gravitational potential and elastic is less than it was before because heat has been lost as waste energy and that then can't be reconverted into kinetic and gravitational. So eventually, this means that the energy is going to go down and down and down because it's being lost as heat and maybe other things like sound and stuff as well. Um, and eventually, he's going to stop bouncing and that will be the end of his bungee jump. Okay, so when it's all said and done, the kinetic energy has pretty much gone down and it's stopped. The gravitational potential energy has gone down and all of that energy has been lost um, as pretty much heat. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, there are many other examples that we could use, but I just wanted to give you an overview um, of the conservation of energy. So even though in this situation energy is being lost, um, it's not actually being deleted or destroyed, it's being lost as a waste form of energy. Okay, so I hope that's helped. If you do have any questions on that, please do send me an email using the link below or write a comment in the comment box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.